Trilby Tour is back after a couple of years in the golfing wilderness. It's a great opportunity for the regular club handicapper to get out, play some new courses, make some friends, and maybe go home with a lovely trophy. Hello and welcome to the Springs Resort and Golf Club here in Oxfordshire for the first event of the Trilby Tour of 2022. It's a cracking day here for the opener. We've got three more events in Yorkshire, Cumbria and Ayrshire with the final at the beautiful Dundonald Links, a venue that's held men's events on the European Tour in the past and this year is holding the Women's Scottish Open on the Ladies European Tour. A big part of the fresh new look of the Trilby Tour is the fact that women are competing too. There will be a female and a male winner at each of the four championship venues and the top five women and top ten men will go on to tear up at the grand final at Dundonald. It's an addition that the new owners of the tour felt was an obvious one. We're absolutely delighted to be involved with the Trilby Tour. It's a fantastic event. We think that some of the changes that we've made from the old format this time round only enhance it. It's delightful to see female players out there playing alongside the men. Really delighted. I think it's amazing that men and women can play on a, a bit of a level playing field. I think it's really nice to see that we're playing in a mixed competition on such a, a grand event. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome setup to start off with. It's as close. I think it's as close to being a professional golfer as what we're going to feel as amateurs. Um, and it seems like everybody's having a good time and yeah, really good. There's a handicap limit of 24 for men and 28 for women and the format is simple, straight Stableford. But what of the course setup here at the Springs? Many of the players enjoyed a practice round yesterday and I asked them how they got on. Absolutely magnificent. The greens are running beautifully. The condition of the course is first class. It's, it's really come on. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, a few years ago it was fabulous, but now it's superb. The course looks, looks great. I mean, I've played it before um, and the greens were really, really good. Um, it looks like they've let the rough grow up, especially around the bunkers. So, you know, I think placement off the, off the tee is going to be quite, quite vital. Um, but if you can keep it in play, there's probably a score out there. So we're all set for the first event of the Trilby Tour in 2022. Let's get you out to the best of the action with our commentator, Kit Alexander. Thank you, Josh. It's great to have the Trilby Tour back. And what a fantastic opportunity for all the players to get a little taste of what it's like to be a tour pro in a televised <laughs> event. On the tee, Andy Adams. <laughs> Andy Adams had the honour of hitting the first tee shot. And it went for miles, apparently. You'll notice all the players have caddies as well, complete with the bibs. Another little taste of how the pros play. Lynn Bewley is a member at the Springs and she made the most of her local knowledge on the 14th. The 23 handicapper rolled in this lovely putt for a par five for three points. Mark Maidman was not going to be missed in those trousers and his golf was standing out too. This excellent chip set up a par for three points on the fourth hole for the member of the London club. On the same hole, Sean Heslin was short of the green in two, but this well-judged pitch helped him to make a par for three points. He would kick on to have an impressive 20 points on the front nine. Ian Lithell already had a couple of three pointers on his card when he got to the 362 yard fifth. It wasn't quite to be for birdie, but the stress free par continued his good start. And of course, looking absolutely fantastic. Greens rolling beautifully as well. Andy Adams had accrued 30 points through 14 holes. And he added another three to his tally with this super par save on the stroke index three, 15th hole. Andrew Taylor held his nerve to finish this one off for a net par on the fourth before making back-to-back -back birdies on the sixth and seventh for four and three points to rocket up the leaderboard. Andy Adams leads the way. The 15 handicapper is three under his handicap with a couple of holes left to play. 
John McGregor has made a great start with 20 points from his first seven holes. And here is Andy Adams on the 17th, looking to post a good number. A little out of position here, though. Oh, he's judged that very nicely. Getting better all the time. He'll have that for birdie. Let's find out about the eighth with Ryan Rastel. So eight of the holes here at the Springs Resort and Golf Club require you to navigate the water. The eighth here is the second par three here on the front nine, 170 for the men and just over 140 for the ladies. But you can see we've got a little bailout just short right of the green. But if you push it too much, you've got these bunkers and you're going to have to play that dreaded bunker shot that none of us want to play back towards the lake. Mark Maidman. Not in the bunker, but he is going back towards the lake. That's a little bit fiery. But he's left himself an uphill putt. Adam's now with that birdie putt. It's a fair bit of slope on these greens here at the Springs. Oh, and it looked like he had the line as well. But he will tap in for his part. Another two points towards the total. Okay. To Andrew Taylor now 26 points through 12 holes. So 24 points would be level par. He's going along nicely. Just a slight pull but not too far away from the flagstick. You can really see it's playing firm and fiery, this course. Lots of shots having to be landed just short to chase them up on. Well, a bit of timber in hand for Adams for his second shot here into the final hole. It is a pretty tough finisher, over 400 yards long, so if you don't catch your tee shot, it suddenly becomes very long. Well, that approach bounding through the green for the Ham Manor member. But an up and down here to save his part would get him three points. <laughs> now the par putt for Maidman. Yeah, oh, very well, hold. He actually played 160 rounds in the first year after he retired and he shot plus four at St Andrews on his 45th birthday. Lynn Bewley, this is her view, a tough one here over the corner of the bunker into 18. Yeah, I think that's the safe play, just opting to head to the right of it, gets it just about pin high, so gives herself a chance for the par. Ooh, a little bit tentative from Taylor from the fringe. So about four foot left for his par. And this is Bewley for the, the four, the grandstand finish on 18. Oh, that's an excellent judgment of pace. She looks happy enough with it. She's playing alongside Andy Adams and great to have the men and women playing in mixed groups as well as, of course, the mixed tournament. The first time the women have played in Trilby Tour and this is Adams third. Well, a little bit too much loft perhaps, didn't quite carry it on and he's got work to do there. Taylor finishes that off nicely for the par. So Adams, 37 points. This for the par on 18. And just leaves it in the jaws. It will be a bogey to finish. And that takes him to 39 points. So the first man out on the course has set the target. And it's a decent one. 
And Lynn Bewley. And that's a very tidy bogey on a tough finishing hole. 30 points for her. Sean Heslin, 22 points up to the 12th hole. This for birdie. Decent for pace. Leaves himself a stress-free tap in for par, and that's never a bad thing. He's travelled all the way over from County Sligo in Ireland to play in this tournament. And that three-pointer gets him to 25. Andy Adams is the man to catch on 39 points. Taylor is two under par gross after 13 holes and going like a train with 32 points and five holes still to play. A few interested spectators here at the Springs. And one or two of them getting a bit too close to the action. Andrew Taylor had 40 points with two holes left to play. The former Leicestershire County junior player could only make a bogey for one point on the 296 yard 17th hole. John McGregor was putting together one of the rounds of his life with 34 points through 13 holes. This was his fourth shot on the par 5 14th and a two putt would give him another two points. It was more bad news for Taylor on the 18th as this miss meant it was a blob to finish. But his 41 points was still a terrific total. Will it be enough for the win? The women's competition was hotting up. Lucky Robinson was oh, out yeah. in 15 points, <laughs> but she was delighted as this par putt toppled in on the 16th. And two three-pointers to finish saw her in the clubhouse with 33. John McGregor left his par putt on 14 in the jaws, but the tap-in secured another two points and kept his momentum rolling. His daughter's boyfriend, Dan Cook, plays off plus three and won the Kent Amateur Match Play Final the day before this event. Norman Kane had 35 points in 16 holes, including birdies at the 7th, 12th and 16th. He got his second shot at the 17th to stop quickly for another birdie chance. Martin Crichton had 23 points on the front nine and a birdie two on the 10th. This chip on the 14th helped him add another three points. Kane's birdie effort on the 17th just slid by. Not even the classic golfer's knee bend could help it drop but he was still on course to secure a spot in the grand final. <coughs> McGregor was having the type of round you dream about, and when it's your day, things like that happen. His second shot at the par three, 16th hit the pin, and he had another two points in the bag. That's got McGregor alongside Taylor on 41 points, but he still has two holes to play. Andy Adams and Sean Heslin can be very proud of their 39 and 38 points, respectively. And here is Crichton on the 16th tee. 183 yards, so a good mid-iron today. Oh, he's just tugged that a bit left. It's a tough finish here at the Springs. Let's hear about the 17th. So the 17th hole here at the Springs is a risk and reward par four. We've got the lake down the right hand side, or you can play it safe up the left with an iron. It's 270 yards on the card, but actually about 235 to the flag in a straight line. So you may find some players today have a bit of a go at it and it could really make or break your score. Well, John McGregor, the man on fire on the golf course. This is second shot. He actually only had 19 points in a Trilby Tour event back in 2019, but well, his day is getting better and better today. Well, Crichton looking for a big finish to get himself in and amongst the podium places. Oh, it's 
said he didn't have a lot of green to work with, but he's judged that pretty nicely, landing it on the fringe. Oh, McGregor. Oh, well, that one just slides by, and that's about the only thing he's done wrong all day. But still a par, and it moves him to 44 points. Crichton to tidy up what would be a lovely up and down on 16. Oh, and he does. So 38 points in the bag already for him. Well, it looks like McGregor is going to secure this title, but Crichton hoping to get himself into second spot. So you see that grip of McGregor, he spent a lot of time working on that. He had a lesson a couple of weeks before this. The pro changed his grip and he hit over 700 balls in practice. A little wayward with that one, but I think he's strolling to victory here. Gail Hill, only been playing golf a couple of years, took it up when she retired. Obviously taken to it like a duck to water. Good contact there, and that gets her down towards the green. Well, Crichton knew he had to make something happen. Went for the green. Hasn't worked out for him. This is fourth shot now on 17. Oh, that's a very nicely played shot, though. So gives himself a chance to escape with bogey. Hill, that third into the par five, fourteenth. Again, really solid contact. Hang on there. Yeah, and she's left herself an uphill putt for birdie. John McGregor. In the left of picture, that's the bunker shot he's got on the final hole. It's a tough one. Oh, he has played that superbly. Well, what a round of golf this is. Real rewards for all the hard work he's put in in the couple of weeks leading up to the event. Crichton for his bogey on 17. Oh. Not to be. So it's a double bogey for Crichton. He does still get a point, though, so that takes him to 39. Gail Hill from Cherwell Edge. Uh, lady captain kindly caddying her for her today. Oh, get in. Oh, just slides by on the right-hand side. That par, though, still for three points, so she's back to one over her handicap now. McGregor for the grandstand finish, the closing par. He never quite had it high enough. But I think he can be pretty certain that this tap in, hopefully for a five, gives him an incredible total of 46 points. Eight over par gross for the 18 handicapper. Superb effort. Yeah, John, make sure those numbers are correct. Eric, One of the rounds of your life. Yeah, McGregor's yeah, tied up the title, but let's have a look at some of the other grand final qualifiers. Matt Holbrook notched up five three-pointers and hold this bogey for one point on 18, and a cracking gross score of 74 for 40 points, and a place in the grand final at Dundonald Links. Norman Kane had to settle for a double bogey for one point on the 402-yard closing hole. But it was a strong 20 points on the back nine and 38 points overall for the 10 handicapper.
Dan Fry had started like a train with birdies on the opening two holes and 22 points on the way out. The four handicapper shot a level pass 72 to also advance the Dundonald Lynx with 40 points. Well, Martin Crichton was looking to finish in style. He burnt the edge of the hole for par on 18. He finished blob 3-1-2 for a 41 point total and third place on the final leaderboard. Gail Hill produced a strong finish. She had two points on 16, three points on 17, and this lovely chip on 18. She completed the job by holding the putt for another two points, and her total of 35 was enough to secure the women's title. John McGregor's incredible 46 points earned him a five-point victory from Taylor and Crichton. All 10 players on the first page of the leaderboard have qualified for the grand final later this year. Gail Hill won the women's prize by two points, and Lecky Robinson, Lynn Bewley, Kim Carver, and Michelle Gallup will all be joining her at Dundonald Lynx as well. <laughs> Ashley Pheasant from Darwin Escapes, who owned the Trilby Tour, handed over the trophies. I was so nervous at the start of the day. I didn't want to eat my breakfast. Um, we played yesterday, and I scored the same number of points yesterday. So at least I'm consistent, and I didn't want to know the score at all. Marion, my caddy, thank you, Marion, um, just told me to keep going and keep calm. and. I thought I was doing okay, but I didn't want to know. I missed a lot of putts today, and I thought I'd blown it, and I'd ruin my putting, but thank heavens I've won it. I'm overjoyed, actually. The leading male with 46 points is John McGregor. <laughs> McGregor still on cloud nine as he receives the trophy after all those hours of practice paid off. I'm still in a little bit of a dream. It hasn't quite sunk in yet. Um, amazing. I'm sure in a minute it will hit me. My mission for today was to not do anything silly, to not try anything that I'm not capable of. And fortunately, I had a few putts that went in and it all worked out really well. That brings an end to the first event of the Trilby Tour in 2022. And what a day it's been. Congratulations to John in the main event and Gail in the inaugural women's event too. They're both heading to Dundonald Links for the grand final. Next up, we're in Cumbria at Caris Green. We'll see you there. It's bye for now.